of Jesus this morning. Let's give him our best.
The darkness fears your voice That drove it back before And though the night is long I know your light Will drive it back once more
things will change on your authority. Yes, your word, it's true. Things change on your authority. Let's tell them one word from you. Things change. Without borders, let me. 
trust our Savior Jesus in the midst of this season. Amen. You made the best choice for being here on a Sunday morning, putting God first and trusting in Him. He is faithful. Amen. Well, I want to welcome you guys to church at home. Put in the chat, trust Jesus. Put it in the chat. Hey church, welcome again to The Calling Church at Home. My name is Kareen Alfaro and I'm co-pastor here with my husband at The Calling and we are so honored that you are joining us this morning. Welcome home. We have some great things going on at church. One of them is starting today, right? Today in the chat. And what is today? Today we're starting 21 days of prayer and fasting. And we want you guys to be a part. If you sense God has something bigger and greater for your life and you desire to know Him more, we think 21 days of prayer and fasting is the perfect way to start your year off following Jesus. We have some awesome things for you guys and for us as a church community to partake in and to engage with, with each other. So I wanna share with you guys a few things that you can start today, this week. One of them is we have a Bible reading plan that we're going to do together as a church. So on the YouVersion Bible app, you can friend the Calling Church and on there we have the Bible reading plan we're gonna do for this next 21 days. It's super cool. You can read along with your church family and see who's on there and engage. It's gonna be really awesome. Also on our website, we have a daily prayer focus list. And this time of prayer and fasting, hence the name prayer and fasting, is about seeking Him and going to Him deeper like we never have before. So every day we're gonna pray about a specific subject and seek God and what He is doing in our nation, in our country, and just asking Him for bigger and greater and better things, amen. Also, I'm excited about, we are starting our Zoom life group this week for prayer and fasting. It's gonna be every Wednesday coinciding with the 21 days at 6.30 p.m. So go on the website, we have the Zoom ID for you, and it's gonna be a great time for us to come together and just follow Jesus and pursue Him in prayer together, amen? So I wanna see you guys there. Also, we have some worship playlists on there for you just to soak in His presence as you go about your day and your week in this time. So right now, Below me, there's gonna be a link to our website with all of those resources on there. Also, it explains what the prayer and fasting time is and different ways that you can fast. You can fast food, which is the traditional way, but there's also so many other ways you can fast, which is called a soul fast. It could be social media, it could be a certain hobby, or maybe TV, whatever it is for you. We want you guys to go to God and see what He would have you fast in this season and in this time, amen? So go to God. We want you guys to engage and jump in and participate in any way that you guys are able. It's gonna be a powerful time and we can't wait to hear the amazing stories that are gonna come out of this 21 days. Well, right now we have the opportunity to continue to worship in our giving. Let's give God praise. We love to give here at The Calling Church. I wanna to read to you guys Malachi 3.10. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. And I love this so much because God says right here, God, the Lord Almighty, it says, test him in this. And this is the one area in the Bible it talks about that you can test him. And God is saying, test me. If, I will, if you will not see that, I will throw open the floodgates of heaven from your tithe of faithfulness. And so what is a tithe? A tithe is the first 10% of what we earn and we give it back to God. If you think about it in essence of all that we get, the 100%, God is only asking for the 10%, which is small compared to the other 90%. And God is saying when you give to Him faithfully, He will throw open the floodgates of heaven and I know sometimes we can't understand how God can make the 90% go further than the 100, but this verse is a promise from God that He says, test me in this and I will give you back above and beyond what you have given. Now this isn't about the prosperity gospel at all. This is just showing God's faithfulness when you trust Him as your source instead of your money as your source, amen. So this year in 2021, we are continuing to put God first as our source, amen. So let's pray together as we go and prepare our offering and tithes, amen. Dear Jesus, we love you. We honor you this morning. We thank you that you are a faithful God. You are so good 
And right now in this moment, we pause and we give back to you, God. We thank you, we honor you. You are our source. And we thank you that you are providing every single detail and thing that we need to take care of our lives for this 2021. We trust you and we believe in you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, church, we have an awesome message ahead. Pastor Michael is back with us. Let's welcome him in the chat and let's get ready. Take out your notes, take out your phone, type your notes on there, write them out, whatever's best for you, but we're gonna lean in and grow in this time. Let's welcome Pastor Michael in the chat. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to The Calling at Home. I've missed you so much. I apologize, last week I wasn't feeling too well. I had a cold. Uh, don't worry, I got tested. I don't have COVID or the flu, praise Jesus, all right? But I missed you and I was so bummed that I couldn't speak to you on the first day uh, or first weekend of the year. I wanna say happy new year. And I wanna thank my very special friend, Israel Laza. Wasn't he amazing last weekend for stepping in my place and preaching and sharing a good word? Well, hey, it's my honor to be with you today. And I believe I have a very special, powerful, enlightening word for you this morning. I miss you so much. And uh, I'm so excited for a powerful new year and new season. I've been praying my butt off, all right? Uh, believing for great things for your life and for our church this 2021. But before I continue on with my message, and uh, actually, let me just say this. I wanna thank all of you who are on the chat right now. Good morning, chat crew. Uh, if you're watching for the very first time, welcome to The Calling at Home. Uh, my name is Pastor Michael Alfaro, and I lead this amazing church with an, a, great, a great team and my beautiful wife, Corrine. Uh, uh, before I move forward with my message this morning, I just want to address what had happened a few, year, a few days ago, excuse me, at the Capitol in Congress. After a lot of reflecting and praying and like you, watching the TV, in fact, I was supposed to be preparing my message, but I was, couldn't believe what I was seeing. My eyes were glued to the television, just uh, flabbergasted about what, is ha what was happening. It deeply moves me and is saddening and frustrating and appalling that we as a country uh, have resorted to this way, resorted this way. I think, like, I, like anything, I think it should serve as a wake-up call to all Americans, to our church, of where we're at as a nation spiritually. Uh, I am so proud of this church during the last uh, year. We have Republicans and Democrats in our church. And as believers, we must understand that before we're Americans, we're Christians. And that's where we find our common ground. And we be both believe and we understand whether we're Democrat or Republican at this church that Jesus Christ is our savior and is the hope of the world and of this country. That no leader, no president, no legislative, uh, no legislature, no law is gonna save this country. But it is God uh, reviving the soul of this nation. Uh, we agree on that part. Uh, I don't care what your politics are. We need to be praying. And as, as, as we engage in this special season of prayer and fasting, I want you to be praying for our country because I believe that our best days are still ahead of us and that we can still rise from the ashes. Amen and amen. Somebody put amen on the chat right now. Uh, I'm very proud of this church because we've been able to lift up the name of Jesus without arguing, arguing with each other. And there's a lot of uh, there's several people in my church over the course of last year who have personally given me a call and shared your feelings about what you feel uh, about uh, just this political climate on both spectrums. And I listen, and uh, that's my role in all of this. Uh, we lift up the name of Jesus as a church, and we believe in his word. That's where we stand politically, right here on his word. Amen and amen. All right, so let's go ahead and get into our, our sermon this morning. It's a very special time of the year. We are starting 21 days of prayer and fasting. I'm so excited and thrilled about what we're gonna be engaging in for the next three weeks. And I want you to participate at whatever level you are comfortable. I'm gonna be explaining uh, fasting and praying throughout the weeks and throughout my message today. And I believe that God wants to release a fresh anointing over your life. I believe that God wants to release a fresh anointing uh, uh, for us as a church 
over the course of this new year. God doesn't want us to operate in last year's strength. He wants us to operate in new oil and fresh strength and new anointing for what's to come this year. God has a purpose for us as a church and as a people. And I am so thrilled. Can you tell? Come on, somebody. All right. So we're going to be in the book of Revelation uh, chapter 3, verse 20. It's a very famous passage of scripture. And uh, don't get nervous in the service because I know we're talking about Revelation, but it's a deeply profound scripture. And let's go ahead to the text right now. I'm going to wait and pause and look at my watch until you get your Bible out and your Bible app out, okay? Uh, because we need to be engaged with the word. And at this church, we are a Bible-believing church. We are a spirit-filled church. We believe, uh, we worship in spirit and in truth. And uh, uh, I am, my background is uh, Foursquare and Pentecostal. So I love uh, and, and operate in the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But my degree is involved with theology and biblical studies. And I love the mashup of spirit and truth. Uh, that's how I was raised growing up, and that's how we operate as a church, all right? So let's go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, all right? It says this, here I am, exclamation point. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, let me say that again. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. Let me get a little dramatic on y'all and knock for a second. Here I am. I stand at the door. And I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to meet online this morning. And I believe with all my soul and all my heart, God, that you want to release a fresh anointing this morning over this message. I pray, Father, that it would inspire people, touch lives, touch hearts, renew spirits, renew strength, God. God, we want to go deeper with you. We want to go further with you in our walk of faith, God. We're so grateful for your faithfulness and all your goodness to us in 2020. How we not only we've survived and remained afloat, but you've sustained, you've forgiven, you have given fresh grace out, God. You've poured out your love for us, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, we're praying for fresh anointing. God, we're praying for you to do a new thing, God, this year in 2021. God, we love you and we trust you. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us this morning. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen. The title of my message this morning is called Make Room. Go ahead and type it on the chat right now. Make Room. Make Room. Uh, the title of our new series, which we're going to be engaging along with our 21 days of prayer and fasting is called Make Room Series, all right? So our Make Room Series is our series this morning and for the next few weeks. There's a famous painting called The Light of the World. You may have heard of it. In fact, Google it. It's called The Light of the World, painted by the famous William Holman Hunt in the 1850s. That's right, the 1850s. It captures the beauty of Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. In fact, he's, this painting is an oil uh, painting, and the, the colors on this painting is beautiful. Uh, the light in this picture, the way some artists are able to just capture light is amazing. And if you ever look at this painting, you'll see that he captures this moment in scripture where Jesus is knocking on a door and the door looks like this. It's, it's this long old door and there's these, it's this overgrown door and there's some weeds and there's some, there's some vines that are, and bushes that are covering, covering the door, almost as if the door hasn't been opened in a long time time. In fact, uh, it looks like the, the, that in this setting that there's, it's dawn. So it's mostly dark as a, as a sunrise in the background, so to speak. And Jesus is holding a lamp with one hand and he's knocking with the other hand on this door. And what the artist does so beautifully is he captures the spirit of Jesus. And, and if you just look at the character of Christ in this scripture, it tells you about our savior and our king. Look at what he's doing and, or look at what he's not doing. Jesus is not kicking down the door. Jesus is not beating down the door or berating the door or barging the door. Jesus is peacefully knocking on the door on this painting, what's so significant about this, uh, this painting, this illustration, 
is that there is actually no handle on the front of the door. So as Jesus is knocking on the front of the door, there's no way in to the house. The, 50 years later, the artist had to explain why he had done that. It, it, and what it means is, it, quote, he says this, it means the obstinate shut mind, end quote. In other words, the only entryway into the house in which Jesus is knocking is through the handle of the inner door, not the outer door. I want to speak to someone this morning because I believe with all my soul and all my heart that this new year in 2021, God wants to do a fresh new thing. I, I believe that you can hear it, that you can sense it, that you feel the impression upon your heart. Even as I speak to you this morning, you might be watching for the first time. You might not have ever gone to church or our church, but somewhere deep down inside on the soul of you, you hear a knock of Jesus. In fact, you hear the Holy Ghost calling to you. My son, my daughter, open up the door and let me in. Look at the character of Christ. I, I don't know about you, but I know a lot of people in my own family. I know a lot of people in my own life who would beat that, the door down, who would kick the door wide open, all right? Who get a crowbar and open up that thing. But look at the character of Christ. Someone is watching today and you're still trying to figure out who this Jesus is. Well, look at the scripture right here. And if you want to know who Jesus is, look at, the, look at the word right here painted for us to see the character of Christ is that he's the prince of peace. He's, he's good and he's kind and he's loving and he's never going to barge down or break down the doors of your life, but he's simply going to knock on the door of your heart and say, son or daughter, the only way I'm coming in is if you open the door because there ain't no handles on the outside of it. Oh, come on, somebody say amen. I feel the Holy Ghost up on this message today. I feel like preaching. I believe that God wants to change your life this new year. I believe that God wants to do something in the calling church that he's never done before. And as I've already been praying uh, uh, on my knees, seeking the presence of the Father, I believe that there is a divine call on this church. In many respects, we shouldn't have made it. In many respects, we shouldn't have gone five years down the road with how we started. But the favor of God and the miracles we've seen and the testimonies and the transformations that we have seen and the favor of God we have experienced uh, leads me to know that God is in this church. And just to talk about favor for a second, let me open up your mind, boo-boo. The very ground in which I'm standing is not my church. They, we are friends with the pastors of this church. They open up their doors because our church, the inside, had been closed. We weren't able to film. We weren't able to do our production there and so forth. But look at the favor of God. Pastor John and Bob Reeve and Jenny Reeve, come on over to our church, Michael, and continue the work that God is doing in and through you. Oh, come on, somebody. God wants to do this amazing thing in your life. Make room. I got a question for you. As Jesus is knocking on the door of your life and your heart, is there some room in your life Oh, come on, somebody. I want to inspire someone to make some room for Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the Father in your life this morning. Interesting enough, the Greek word for voice. In fact, you can hear my voice. I'm still overcoming my cold for the, for the most part, almost there. But the Greek word for voice it used in Scripture in which the Bible, the New Testament was written in Greek the Greek word for voice is the word phonets. It's literally spelled P H O N E. In other words, uh, friend, the phone is ringing in your spirit, inside of your soul, and it's time to answer the call. It's time to respond. Jesus is calling you this 2021. You know what amazes me about the context of this scripture? And I'm a pastor that loves to study his word because I need his word in my own life. And, and as I study for my messages, I love to study the context and excavate the text. But what amazes me about the scripture is let's look at what Jesus is doing. In Revelation 3, chapter 20, we understand that Jesus is talking about several different churches. This church specifically is the Laodicean church. And Jesus is knocking on the door of his own church. I mean, can you, what, 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 let's look at this picture how is Jesus on the outside of the, his own church? Why is he outside the walls? 
Why is he on the other side of the door? Why is people not knocking on his door and he's letting them into inside the home, so to speak, or the church, but instead he's on the outside of the church. That's right, you heard me correctly. Sometimes the church can kick out the very, the very head, the very prince of peace out of, their own, out of the church. Jesus is giving a critique to this church. What has happened is they become wealthy, apathetic, unimpassionate. Uh, they become a complacent. They stop growing, indifferent, and not interested anymore because they became wealthy. I'm talking to someone today. You become complacent because you're good where you at, boo-boo, and it's time to keep moving forward in your faith. Stop being stagnant. Keep on climbing because Jesus has a purpose for you and do not let wealth This is what happened to this church. They've accumulated wealth in a leading city and therefore stop pressing forward. How many of you know right now that the church of Jesus Christ is needed right now more than ever? Just look around. Just turn the state, the, the, the TV channel, CNN, Fox News, all kinds of junk going on out there. To me, it's not a surprise because it is a reality of fallen, broken humanity. This is what darkness does, and this is what lost people do, all right, without Jesus Christ. But I believe that there's an anointing on the calling church to be a lighthouse of hope, to be a city upon a hill, to shine the resplendent light of hope and faith and love and peace and Jesus. I believe that we're called to be the salt of the world, to be the light of the world. In fact, we're not the ones that shine. The, uh, uh, the light don't come from us. We just reflect in the light. Boo boo, come on somebody. So take all of that, that pressure off of yourself, okay? Just like the moon reflects the sun, so are we supposed to reflect the Savior, Jesus Christ. So what amazes me is why is Jesus outside of the church? Why is Jesus knocking on the door of his own church? Yes, he's talking to, and we must understand the definition of what church is. Church is not walls, people. Church is not a a brick and mortar and drywall and doors. Church is me. Church is you. Church is the ecclesia of God, the people, the community of God. I'm asking you this year to go further. I'm asking you this year to go deeper. I'm asking you to be more faithful. I'm asking you to get up off the ground and keep on moving forward because you have a destiny upon your life. You are made for more uh, uh, in this life. You, God has more for you than, the, what the, than what the world could ever offer you. All right. I believe that God is knocking on the door of your heart and no, it's not UPS. No, it's not FedEx. And no, it's not Amazon Amazon Prime. It's Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit reaching out to you deep down inside. All right. We need to make room. Watch this. Why do we need to make room for Jesus? Why do we need to make room for Jesus? Because other things are occupying some space in our life. Other things are occupying space in our life. And I want to speak to someone this morning. I I believe with all my heart that I'm talking to someone right now. And you, what is occupying your life is hurt. I don't care if it's just one person. I feel like God had told me this this morning that that someone is watching right now and hurt and pain, and anguish has been occupying your life. And can I just share something with you? I believe God wants me to say this to you right now. God wants you to get through the hurt. God wants to get you beyond the hurt. To be quite straight with you and honest with you, for a lot of years in my life, just to share with you just my past, a lot of of hurt had occupied my life. A lot of pain has, had occupied my life. I was angry all the time. Even though Jesus was my savior, the throne of my heart belonged to anger. Explosions and disruptions and just anger. And really what it was, and I didn't know it at the time, was I was just hurting inside because of the brokenness and of the pain of the past. And just to let you in, my, I, I struggled with the brokenness of being somewhat, so to speak, rejected by my family, my parents, 
because they were involved with drugs all my life. Uh, they, they, they were in and out of prison and gangs. Uh, always feeling dejected, being, you know, going to grandparents' house and the other grandparents' house and then living with my aunt and going to five different elementary schools and just living with the anguish of pain and then growing up as a man thinking, man, I'm good, I'm straight, homie. You know what I'm saying? I play baseball and, you know, I'm just the whole man thing and I'm good, boo-boo, you know what I'm saying? No. Even though I was a man, there was still a little boy hurt inside of me and I'm talking to someone right now. You're a man, homie, and, you're, and there might be a woman watching right now, but there's still a, 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 a little girl hurt. There's still a little boy hurt on the inside of you. And I know you're straight, and I know you're good, and I know you're tough, but on the inside, I know there's a little girl, girl crying, and I know there's a little boy crying, and I want to tell you this morning that uh, hurt don't have to occupy your life anymore in the name of Jesus, because Jesus is knocking on the heart of your door, and it's time to get healed. Come on, somebody. And the way you're going to get healed is by opening up your soul to Jesus. He's going to come in and he's going to do a lot of major work inside of you. I know. And there's people in my church that know. I know this for sure because he's helped me with the hurt. He's helped me with the hangups. And I've been able to press through and forgive my father and forgive my mother and even forgive the people who hurt me in the past when it comes to church. Yes, there are people watching right now. You've been hurt by, pe- by church people not feeling welcome, not to- told you're not good enough. But let me tell you, you got to get over that. You got to get through that. Jesus has a purpose and a plan for your life. Come on, somebody. Are you listening, listening out there? It's time to not let hurt occupy your life. The throne of your heart belongs to Jesus. And the only way he's going to take that seed in your life is if you open the door. He's not going to force his way in there. And some of you right now, uh, there might be pride. You might be struggling to give him that place. But I promise you that Jesus won't ever abuse your life like someone in the past has. And maybe that's what you're struggling right now is forgiveness. Maybe you're upset with God and maybe, maybe you're watching. Somehow it's a miracle that you're watching today. And you're having a hard time to let him in. But I want to encourage you and inspire you this morning to open the door. Over the next 21 days, we're going to be praying and fasting. And I'm so excited about this. Jeremiah 29, 13 says this, you will seek me. Everyone knows Jeremiah 29, 11 and 12. All right. But watch this. Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me uh, when you seek me. Watch this. With all, somebody say all on the chat right now. With all your heart, not a piece of your heart, with all your heart. That's right. God loves you so much. He wants all of you, not a piece of you. All right. So over the course of the next three weeks, I'm asking you uh, to fast with us as a church. All right. And here, let me explain the idea of fasting. Fasting is not about focusing on the lack. Fasting is about focusing on the hunger for Jesus Christ, for hunger, hunger, hunger uh, for the things of God. Fasting is that we may focus on God, is that we may feast on his word, is that we may feast on his presence, and that we may feast on his promises and not focus on the lack. All right. Like the old saint quotes, uh, the old quote goes, if you want to know how popular your pastor is, go to church on a Sunday. If you want to know how popular your, your uh, excuse me, your pastor is, go to church on a Sunday. If you want to know how popular your church is, go to service on a weekday. But if you want to know how popular God is in your church, go to a prayer meeting, all right? And you will see how popular God is. Let's show God at our church how good he is and how popular he is and how dependable we are. Uh, we are upon him in this time of seeking and, and, le- and his leading and searching for his voice in our life. I don't know what you need right now. Maybe, you're, maybe, maybe you need a breakthrough in your life. Maybe you got a bad report from a doctor. Maybe your marriage is on, literally on the cracks. It, it, is on the, it is on the cliff and it's just barely surviving. 
Maybe you just want to go deeper in your faith. Maybe you want to gain some wisdom and insight from Jesus Christ. I believe that God is going to do something in your life over the next 21 days as you go further with him. And I pray and I know and I'm expecting to hear breakthroughs and stories and miracles and anointing of what God is going to, go, is going to do in this season as you go further in your faith. In fact, I want you to email me or Carmen at thecallingla.com and share with us these stories so we know how God God is moving in our church and in our community, all right? So let me just recap for a second. God is knocking on the door of your life and he's not gonna come in unless you allow him in. And we must understand that, yes, churches throughout its history, all right, we've seen it. We've seen it. If you read history, if you study history and if you study the word, that sometimes churches can become so proud and so obstinate And so distracted, (laughs) and I don't have time to get into politics right now, but come on, y'all. Some of the church has been distracted in the last few years. We must be reminded of who is our head and what we do value and what we do stand for. That's the name of Jesus, and that's his word. Come on, somebody. All right. Uh, uh, And at this church, I believe that there's a significant anointing on us to do amazing work in the times in which we are living. You know, and I want to encourage someone right now. What I, I, I felt the Lord tell me last night as I was preparing, uh, uh, I prepare for several days, just so you know, I don't prepare in one day or night. But I, last night as I was preparing for the message, I, uh, I felt like the Lord told me, Michael, go to your journals. And what I've done over the course of the last five years, six years, probably six years, um, as we planted this church, I, I actually journaled my way through the whole process. I, 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 I just wrote down my feelings, the good, the bad, the ugly. And I felt like Jesus asked Michael to go to your journals. And I went to the specific entry of, me, of hearing the Lord ask me to start the calling church. Man, I was afraid. I was intimidated. I felt like I, didn't, I had no idea even where to start. But as I was reading my journal entry, this is six years ago. Here I am further along the journey now on this side of following Jesus. You know, some of you right now, you're, you're, you're afraid to, to, to go further. Some of you are afraid. I've literally heard people say, if I go further with Jesus, if I give him more of my life, I'm afraid he's going to make me do something I don't want to do. I'm afraid he's going to send me to a part of the world I don't want to go to. Let me tell you, friend, God has an anointing. He knows you better than you. All right. But as I was reading my journal entry, uh, I I kept imagining myself, if I didn't follow the call, where would I be and what would I do? But I'm so, and as I was reading it, I I kept viewing myself on this side. Wow, Michael, look, look, man, if, if, if you could jump back into history six years ago and encourage yourself then, what would you say? I want to encourage you right now. Six years, six, why don't, here, here's a challenge for someone right now as you're watching this right now. It's a challenge for you. I want you to give a whole year of your life to Jesus. I want you to surrender your life to Jesus. Give him one whole year of your life and see that he won't dramatically change your life. See that he won't dramatically change your relationship. See that he won't change the course of your destiny and your future. Come on, somebody. God has an anointing and a calling for your life and he uh, has great things for you. Stop talking yourself out of the wonderful things that God has for you and wants to do through you. All right. So over the course of the next three weeks, we're going to be praying and fasting. And we have tons of resources available for you to participate in. I believe my wife shared it earlier, but we have a 21-day fast life group that's starting this Wednesday at 630. You got to be part of that. It's going to encourage your life. We have a 21-day Bible app or reading plan that we're doing together. I'm doing that. You got to jump on the email, sign up for that. And I've created a 21 day, every single day prayer list for our church to engage in, in this season. I believe that it's going to touch your life. Uh, Here's why. And as I close, here's why you ought to make room for Jesus. This is the reality of the truth of the gospel. Watch this. This is why you got to make room for Jesus because ultimately he has made 
room for you. God has made room for you. Watch this. He's made room for you in his mind. The Bible says in Psalm 8, chapter 4, what is the son of man that you care for him? The son of man that you think of him, David says. God has not only made room for you in his mind, but he's made room for you in his own plans and his purposes. That's right. You might have made a mistake. You might have been a mistake to your mom or your dad, but you were not an accident to God. Let me say that again. You are not an accident to God. The personality, the traits, the gifts that you have are all purposeful. Watch Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and to give you a hope. So God has given you a purpose in his mind, in his plans and purposes, and ultimately in all of eternity, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever would believe, that's you, should not perish but have everlasting life. In other words, what God is doing is he's knocking on the door of your heart and he's asking you, would you let me in? This morning, would you allow me to come inside of your heart? Would you allow me to be the uh, sit on the throne of your heart? Help you overcome hurt. Help you overcome addiction. Help you overcome the the, uh, the issues that is going on in your life. Let me pray, Father. I thank you so much for what you're doing in this church and in our lives, in this season of our life. God, looking back at 2020, Lord, I believe it made us stronger, better, more faithful. As we trust you, God, we're asking to open up our heart to you. We're letting you in this morning. Father, some of us might, have, might be afraid because we let other people in and they've hurt our heart. But God, we know that you're compassionate and you're caring and you're careful. So as we let you in, God, we ask that you take the things that are most sensitive in our life, the pain, the anguish, even the dreams that we have, Lord. And we allow you to lead us, to move us and to touch us in ways that we've never known before, that we may be uh, better Christians and live out our purpose on this earth for a purpose so greater than ourselves. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Church, we have a special song. Stay, uh, uh, lean in in this time. where I lay it down every burden every crown this is my surrender this is my surrender here is where I lay it down every lie and every doubt this is my surrender and I will make room for you
Shake up the ground of all my traditions Break down the walls of all my religion Your way is better Your way is better Shake up the ground of all my traditions Break down the walls of all my religion Your way is better Wasn't that song so beautiful? Isn't my wife so talented and anointed in our team? I just want to thank our team, our production crew, Christian Chavez, our audio engineer, our audio engineer uh, all of the people at the Cause Church for allowing us to do what we get to do. And it's for a great reason. For this moment right here. Maybe you're watching for the first time. Maybe someone invited you. In fact, if you've been coming to our church and watch online, share this message Give someone hope. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about a title or a name, but the name of Jesus. And God wants to help people and come into their life. Share this message and give someone hope. But if you're watching for the first time today and you've been feeling hopeless, you've been feeling occupied with anxiety and stress, Maybe right now for you, life doesn't make any sense. And maybe because of the last year and the things that we're seeing, the chaos of the world, you feel like giving up. You feel like throwing in the towel. But I want to give, give you a special invitation this morning. The most significant invitation is to accept this person who's knocking on the door of your heart. Would you allow him to come in today and allow him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Let me tell you, friend, life will never make sense if you don't accept the one who created it. How could it ever make sense? You're, maybe you're trying to get over habits and addictions and maybe, maybe you're just scared to give your life to Jesus because you feel like you're not good enough. Maybe you're, maybe you're even filled with doubt. Is Jesus a real person? Let me tell you, he's more than just a necklace or a piece of art. He, he is actually a historical person, all right? It is uh, uh, it is not even debated uh, 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 that if Jesus is real or not. Historians, we know this to be true, that Jesus is real because we know that the other people around him, Pontius Pilate was real. We know that uh, uh, Caiaphas was real and so forth. Josephus records it in history. But here's the kicker. Who is Jesus to you? Now that's the part that is the, that the world debates. Who is Jesus? Is he, just a, uh, is he just a prophet? Is he just a great te teacher and miracle worker? Or let me tell you, friend, is he the Lord and Savior of the world and the only hope for humanity? And if, if, if that is uh, to be true, I'm going to tell you, you need to accept him he, today. And that is true. He is the only hope that we have. And he will uh, touch your life and he will forgive all of your sins. You do not have to worry about being good enough. So much of my church in our history, which I love because we're honest, as we just feel like we're not good enough. We're not feel like we're, we don't feel like we're able to be in his good graces, but that is the work of the cross and the beauty of the cross and the atonement of Jesus. That's why he hung up on the cross for six hours so that we may be saved. I wanna give you this special invitation this morning to receive him 
And I wanna welcome you if you're watching us for the first time and welcome you to our church when we gather. If that's you today, would you just pray this simple prayer? Just bow your head with me. And if you're watching with someone in the house, bow your heads together with me and say this. Say, dear God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. I believe I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a savior. Jesus, come into my life. Sit on the throne of my heart. Make me new. Help me through the hurt. Help me through the pain. I want to see you. I want to walk with you. And I'm letting you in. I trust you. And even though the world is in chaos, you are my Christ. And I love you. I confess with my mouth. And I believe with my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. Church, I just want to congratulate you. If you said that for the first time or you made a recommitment to follow Jesus, I want to let you know that your sins have been completely forgiven uh, if you believe in Jesus and have accepted him through faith. I want to welcome you to our church and our community. Please join our chat anytime and join us and engage with us over the next 21 days as we lean into God and see him do significant things in our church and in our personal lives. I love you. God bless you. Uh, uh, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>